Five parts. Yes, five. That is what I have prepared for you in this topic. The reason we wake up every day to go to work is for our families and our wealth. Both combined, you get family wealth. I am Tony Mogisha from Ayton Capital, and this is about preservation of family wealth. But first, it's next to impossible to become wealthy without working. And on that journey, we start out with employment, put in a few years or more, and then realize we need to have our own companies grow them and when we think about how short life is we think about continuity naturally we also think about the possibility of passing on our companies to our families but as you plan to pass on this wealth you have created you ask yourself if the people you are giving it to will understand it let alone preserve it keyword is preserve simply put last longer than three to five generations ideally whether you are self-employed, corporate, or government worker. Many of us hope to create a business to pass on to our families. But very few people have taken the time to find out how families can preserve wealth. A lot of focus is put on creating that wealth. There are two main reasons for preserving family wealth, and both exist to serve family members. Besides, what's the purpose of this wealth or family if these two reasons are met. Reason number one, we fight to preserve family wealth so that we can ensure the basic requirements of each family member are met. These include education, housing, healthcare, and the well-being of each and every family member. Reason two, why we preserve family wealth is to ensure that each family member pursues happiness to the best of their abilities. What's life without happiness? But there is more to this. Preserving family wealth is a dynamic process that involves understanding that it takes human capital, intellectual capital, and financial capital. Probably you're wondering, what do these mean? You see, human capital is all the members that form up the family, whether it's a nuclear or an extended family. Intellectual capital is all the information family members know. And lastly, financial capital, this is the asset or properties that are owned by a family. This is where I ask, as someone who wants to pass on wealth to the next generation, do you know the amount of human capital and intellectual capital that you have within your family and how you put it to good use? If you watch part two, I'll explain this in detail. At Ayton Capital, this is the kind of stuff we help you figure out. Simply hit me up today and we have a chat. I am Tony Mugisha from Ayton Capital. Hope to see you in part two.